So thank you very much for uh, sharing the in this class. That is the quick questions. That is uh, a brief history of English language teaching. In case of discussing this, the history of English language teaching, we have sharp towards the world population, the world languages, the dead language, the first language, second language, foreign language, international language, and the global language. Okay. And at present, we have seen that means many languages are, are there in this world. And these languages are used in the several uh, portion of this country. And we know that is the English language is used in five countries as their first language, okay? That means USA, Canada, Australia, New Zealand. But apart from these countries, other, other countries, they also use English language. Actually, the English language teaching and learning scenario was not like that. In the 20th century, we, see, we have seen that English language has been, I study subjects in universities, in college schools, that means we study English language. But previously, this scenario was not like that. Okay, we have seen that there are 7,100 7, languages in this world. So many languages once upon a time was used in this world. So the situation of English language teaching was not like that before 500 years. Okay. And the situation of other language was rich. And what was the situation? Yeah. And what was the uh, situation of English language teaching all over the methods? Okay. So uh, at present, English is used approximately in all countries of this world. And, but 500 years back, the situation was not like that. And, At the time, uh, the uh, other language also occupied the position of English language. And there is also another scenario that means uh, whose proficiency does a learner need? We know that English language has oral proficiency, reading comprehension, and also listening uh, skill. So what, which one? is the most important language skill. That means we want to study all over the world. Okay. And understanding the necessity of English language teaching and learning, people or the academician or the academics or the researcher, they have changed the approaches and methods in English language teaching. This is based on the necessity of English language or the necessity of the people, they use English or other language as a means of communication. Here, uh, Kelly and Howard, they said that uh, actually 500 years back, there was a methodology, there was a way of teaching and learning English language. But at present, in the 21st century, we use a different approaches methods in English language teaching. But there is no difference, according to Kelly and Howard. They said that actually we are we are we are we are, uh, we are using the same methods and approaches. Okay. So this scenario is uh, happening all over the world in many countries of this world. Uh, there are approximately 200, more than 200 countries, including the islands, 800 crore people, and also 3,500 life languages of this world, or more than 5,000 life languages of this world. Okay. So the scenario of English language teaching was not like 
the scenario of 21st century. The scenario was changed. Why? Why this situation was created? This situation was created basically for the necessity. One of the students, you have said that actually we uh, study language for the cause of our necessity, for the cause of our global communication, for the cause of our uh, global business, for the cause of our global tourism and others, for the cause of our uh, higher studies abroad. Okay. So the international communication, the international communication has been multifaceted. And for this reason, our requirements of learning and teaching language has been multifaceted. Some people want to go to Italy. He want to work over there. He don't, he don't, he doesn't want to be a master of writing, written skill. He want to make the daily communication. But some of you or some of us may want to go to Australia for higher education. And for this reason, we are in a need for developing our writing skill and the others skill. Oh, someone of you may be the business entrepreneur and may do business in USA or other parts. So his necessity. So the immigrants necessity of English language teaching or the Italian language teaching is different, but a necessity for an academician is different. So language learning has been a necessity nowadays. And for this necessity, we are in a position to learn language, not English, many languages based on our requirements. And this necessity increased for the cause of our international uh, connection and communications. Foreign language learning and teaching has been necessary as a practical reason. So uh, why you will study Latin? Why you will study Spanish language? Why you will study Arabic language? If you want to make business with Egyptian government, then you have to learn Arabic language. If you want to make business with the Chinese government, you have to make uh, 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 you have to you have to learn the Chinese or Mandarin language. So, Dr. Muhammad Shoydullah, he learned many languages. Approximately sixteen languages he learned. I don't know in which way he make made this possible. Dr. Muhammad Shoydullah is a man nearly uh, less than five feet high height, but this man, he studied 16 language. So at that time, but in the present time, our requirements is multifaceted. We are in a position to learn so many languages. So many of you, and at present, you will see that at present 60% people of this world, they are multilingual. Multilingual means they know their language and apart from their language, they know other two, three, four or five languages. And this is for what? This is for not for fashion. This is for their requirements. This is for their necessity they, that they have learned five languages or six languages. And you know that in international uh, UN, that means United Nations, they use five official languages. Why? To make communication globally, to make communication to the nation of this world. That's the sense. Actually, why this kind of international connection and development Occurred. This is occurred for this person, Christopher, Christopher Columbus. Ah, Columbus discovered America. Before Columbus, anybody would not know that there is a vast continent over there. There were some people, Red Indian, living at, uh, at the time in American continent or in America, but that was out of human knowledge. For the discovery of Christopher Columbus, the people of this world, they understood that there is a continent that is America, and there uh, Christopher Columbus uh, discovered in 12 October 1492. Okay, apart from the man, we see another person that is Vasco da Gama. Okay, he discovered the water is from Europe to India. Before that, there was no waterways. So the connection was established towards 
USA or American continent after the discovery of Christopher Columbus and apart from the Christopher Columbus, Vasco da Gama make the waterways to Europe, from Europe to India. And he discovered this just after how many years? 1492 and 1498, just after six years, Vasco da Gama discovered these waterways. And another man, right brother, you know, eh? right brother, they invented plane, you know, is it? Yeah. And they invented plane, actually, they invented plane December 17, 1903. Once upon a time, we didn't have such development in technology. We didn't have this communication channel, waterways, and also the uh, plane, and also the linkage between American continent and the linkage between European continent, Europe and the Indian continent. But after this discovery, people's communications between uh, uh, between or among countries that being multifarious for business, for immigration, for education, for tourism, uh, tourism on for many things, the people started to move one country and another country because they have the opportunity to move their own country and another country. Okay, so when they move to another country, there is a question that means in which language and in which way they will be communicating with the person of that country. Okay, and for this reason, we have seen the necessity of having a communication. And that necessity also been established by oral communication and also by written communication. But it is true that you have to communicate with the foreign language. In this regard, we can see some other revolution all over the world. If Tiyaruddin Muhammad Dr. Khilji, Crusades, you may have heard the name of Crusades, Ottoman Empire, yeah? They, they, and also Alexander the Great, okay? They dominated the greater part of this world. They dominated the larger portion of this world for the discovery. What is the motive? We know the motive are different, but the thing is that they started their journey from one portion of this world and they went to the another portion for their, for different motives. Okay, and they uh, wrote that and they did that. And also uh, for this region, uh, we see that people are living from one country to another country. And this opportunity, actually the opportunity of this discovery, that means Vasco da Gama, Columbus, they, this discovery was taken by the French, German, Italy, Dutch, and Great Britain. Out of this country, these five countries, France, German, Italy, Dutch, and Great Britain, they are the sea voyaging countries. They are, their motive was that they will be explored, the unexplored part of this world. That is the motive. And for this reason, they spread it the different parts of this world, the uh, Great Britain. And why? Their motive was to do business. Their motive was to do, uh, uh, to make communications in which way and in different way. Actually, the Frenchmen, the German, they spread the different parts. So in one way, we have got the channel of communication that means the waterways, we have got aeroplane and we have got these people like the adventurer loving people of Dutch, Holland, uh, uh, German and Great Britain and they spread it the different parts of this world. So in this situation, there was a tremendous necessity of global communication in which way, of course, you can't make yourself aloof of this uh, uh, global globalization, the views of globalization. People are moving from one part to be by another part. And for this region, language learning has been crucial all over the world. If you keep yourself alone and you will say, oh, I will only be speaking in Bengali language, 
I will not be speaking in other language, then you have to be aloof. And in this way, and in this uh, portion of globalization, you can't keep yourself aloof in this scenario. Okay. So uh, at present, 60% of the world population are multilingual. Uh, understanding the understanding the uh, necessity the people of this world they are not sitting awake they have started learning language and 60 percent of the world population they have learned many languages based on their requirements and they are called multilingual people of this world they are called not only the citizen of a specific country they have been called the citizen of this globe, they are called the citizen of this world. So this is the scenario at present. Okay. In another portion, if we talk about the scenario of English language teaching, we see that uh, English language at present most widely studied foreign language. Okay, we have got the information previously a little bit earlier that means uh, english speaking people are larger in number in comparison to the chinese language in which way because english language has been the status that means uh, international language foreign language in case of other countries that means in case of usa uk australia new zealand canada they use English as their first language. But apart from these countries, Singapore use English as their second language. In India, English is used as their second language. Okay. And in this way, English language at present is used in every corner of this world. But the scenario was not learned 500 years back or 600 years back. At that time, English was not studied. People were not ready to study English language. They studied other languages. What is their language? At that time, 600 years back, Latin language was studied as a main language of education, commerce, religion, and government in the world system. That means today, English language has been the prominent language, the most dominating language, but 600 years back, it was Latin. Why? Why Latin language at that time studies? In 16th century, the political changes in Europe, Latin lost its position. Okay. Actually, Latin language is famous. And in 14, 13, 12th century, uh, we have seen that Latin language was the dominant language in uh, Europe and all over the world. Why? Because in case of Latin language, they have some uh, great writer. Actually, language will be alive in two ways. Language will be alive in the people. They use it. Manushgulu bhasha bhasha thake. Apart from this, language is alive in the written documents. In Roman civilization, we have seen several writers. Actually, the Roman poet Virgil, and he has written in it a famous epic poem. And in it, can be consisted of the Roman mythology, uh, Roman history, and the Roman tradition, Roman culture, Roman philosopher, all are compiled by this poet, Roman poet Virgil. Apart from this, we have seen another poet that is Ovid. Ovid's Metamorphosis and other writers, he is also famous. He is also the Roman poet. And the Roman civilization also come across with the hands of another academician, his name is Cicero, Cicero, okay. So they, these people, they compiled their philosophy, they compiled their history, they compiled the literature, the great literature of the world in Roman language. And for this reason, 600 years back, it was the Roman language that was used in global communi communication. At present, what we see, we say that if anybody can, communicate smartly in English language, we will say that, yeah, he is the smart people. But 600 years back, Latin language dominated that because Latin language 
was the language of Roman civilization and the Roman civilization, they had these great writers, Virgil, Ovid, and Cicero, and apart from that, they had another person that is the Alexander the Great. At that time, the Roman civilization is spread at the larger part of Europe and other than the Europe. So they have the power, two kinds of power. One military power, the Roman civilization have, the Roman civilization have the academic power, that means they had great literature and they had the economic power as well. So the country's language, the Roman civilization's language, that is the Latin language, that was influenced by threefold power domain, domain uh, power, that means economic power, military power, and cultural power. Cultural power, that means the academic power, and also the uh, 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 academic power, and also the uh, power of their rich literature and philosophy. So in Vivant civilization was that. So 600 years back, people would say that, yeah, I will be learning Latin. And we have seen that William Shakespeare, he studied Latin and the grammar school. Okay, so at that time, that was, so the philosophy of Roman civilization and the other things that were influenced by these great writers and the great warriors like Alexander the Great and the others. So this was the position that in 600 years back, a Roman language was used uh, as a language of prestige, as a language of religion, as a language of culture. So everything that is attributed to Latin language, it is not the English language. But gradually, in 16 and 17 and 18th century, they started using grammar school by Latin grammar rules. So in which way Latin language was used? In 16th, 17th and 18th century, there were a grammar school. We have learned that William Shakespeare went to a school where he studied grammar. What is the grammar? The Latin language and grammar he studied over there. So in European countries in 16th, 17th, 18th century, only Latin language was used. And after that, for the decay of their dominant, uh, for the decay of their military power, the academic power, especially the economic power and the military power, Latin language lost its position. It came and after that, a few linguists like Roger Assism, Montenegro in 16th century and Cominas and John Locke in 17th century proposed to reform the foreign language teaching and learning curriculum. Okay, and at that time in 17th, 18th or 19th century, Latin and Greek language had been identified as the classical and ideal form of language. And so they, their proposal were not reflected in the curriculum. So in this scenario, in the 19th century, in the 20th century, people thought that actually language learning and teaching is done following the grammar school, tradition of the grammar school. The grammar school is Sholo, Chodo, Shotoke, Latin Basha Shikano Hoto, She, Aki Portotite, Poroboti, the show, English Basha Shikano Holo, Cano, Karun, Seven Shotro, the Shoke, Sheshadiki, Roman Civilization Tower, Power, Lust Polo, So Manu Shakon, Latin Basha Nashiki, Unno Basha Shikte Chai. That means they want to learn English or other languages. But the English language teaching and learning process is applied, that is the previous, the grammar method. That means, je poddhutite amra Latin language shiktam, eki poddhutite ingeji bhasha shikhano shuru holo ei atharo onish abong bish dasho education. Here, some uh, linguists, they claim that we have to reform language learning teaching. We can't study language in the way we studied Latin. We can't teach English language in the way we have used to study Latin and Greek language. So we have to move forward and we have to make a change of English language teaching. Okay. And gradually the study of English language teaching was declined and the study of Latin grammar become an end in itself. And Ah, when the modern languages started in turning into the European school curriculum. So modern language, so Latin language has been old language, 
classical language. Uh, and in place of Latin language, we have seen the presence of many modern languages. What are the modern languages? That is Spanish, English, and others. Okay, so they say, many linguistics say, that means the modern language is study and teaching. Latin modern language We have to change the approach. We have to change the method in the way of learning and teaching English language. So this way, the English language is started its journey. And uh, by the end of the 19th century, foreign language teaching was modeled on the purpose of Latin language teaching. But Actually, uh, we, 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 we people all over the world, we are not ready to accept the new one. Linguists, academic Shivan, they say that actually we have to change the approach and methods of English language teaching, but that was not ready. The people was not ready. So in the 19th century, they started English language teaching or modern language teaching following the uh, teaching method we applied in case of learning Latin language and Greek language. So there was, a, there was no any new position at the time. And uh, actually, in case of Latin language teaching, there were a portion that means they have to study grammar and they have to study translation in case of learning Latin and Greek language. In the uh, first or the last half of the 19th century, that that, uh, that style or approach was applied in case of modern language teaching. Jehabe amra Latin bhasha shiktam, Greek bhasha shiktam, grammar pore, abong translation pore. Thik aki bhabe, unish doshoke shurute eshe kisu kisu scholar, they wanted to change, kintu tarah pare nai. Takhon, a Jibhabe Latin Bhasha Shikano Hoto, Tik Aki Habe, English Bhasha Shikar Puddotio Chalu Holo, Jatake Kinamra Bolsi J, Grammar, Translation, Method. That means first you have to study the grammar, then after studying the grammar, you have to learn the uh, translation, that means from target language to target language, and uh, from target language to mother language, Latin to France, French, French to Latin. Latin to Greek, Greek to Latin. So this approach is called grammar translation method. So in such a way, the language learning and teaching journey started from 14th century to the 19th century. Okay, so grammar translation method is basically, uh, it was initiated in uh, uh, America. Okay. And it is called Prussian method. So there was a province over there in Prussia, grammar translation method was started. And uh, there are some benefits of grammar translation method. Okay, and there are some drawbacks of grammar translation method. And these benefits and uh, uh, methods will uh, be in case of this method, that means the grammar translation method. So in the history of English language teaching, we have seen that once upon a time, Latin language was used as the language of religion, as the language of culture. But towards the beginning of the 19th century, people thought that we have to use other language. That means Latin language become a declined or dead language. And English language, apart from other modern language, they occupied the place of Latin. And they wanted to study uh, uh, language in a different way, but they put on do so. They started following the method that is grammar translation method, and they, they and they they went in this way. So that is the grammar translation method. So grammar will be there, and of course, and uh, uh, and up to towards the mid 19th century, uh, there was another demand. So what happened? In the beginning of the 19th century, we started teaching and learning English language or modern language following GTM, that means grammar translation. Method. But towards the beginning of the second 
Towards the mid 19th century, increased demand of oral proficiency among the European standard questioning and rejecting GTM. Okay, so at this time we have got uh, uh, we have got that people they are ready to increase their oral proficiency as we have learned that for the discovery of the waterways, for the discovery of the aeroplane, people were ready to go foreign countries in different perspectives. So they are not ready to accept the written proficiency. In case of GTM, grammar translation method, grammar translation method will, we will make you efficient in case of uh, enhancing your writing capabilities. But there is a lack of learning in case of uh, oral proficiency in, in case of GTM. But towards the second half of the 19th century, people are ready to increase their oral proficiency that is not present in gamma translation method. So people at that time, they thought that they will be uh, expecting another method that will increase their oral proficiency. So in Germany, England, France, and other parts of the Europe, New approaches of parallel language teaching developed by the individual language teaching initiative by few linguists, that is like C. Marcel, Prendergent, and the F. Gwyn, they initiated. So getting, that means people at that time, they are ready to increase their oral proficiency. method method GTM. GTM can't improve the oral proficiency. So this linguist, they tried to uh, apply the other method that will uh, increase the uh, oral proficiency of the learners. So this F. Gwyn, Penderden, and Marcel, they tried to install other approaches and methods. And especially Marcel referred to a child language learning as a model for foreign language. So uh, Frenchman C. Marcel, he said that actually, So uh, uh, Marcel said that, yes, we have to study language the way a child learns language. That was prescribed by Marcel. Penderjin, he said that observe children contextual and situational clues to interpret utterance. And he also proposed structural service. So, Penderson, he said that the context, in which context you are learning language and in which situation you are learning language, that is important. And F. Gwyn, this person proposed that actually uh, language teaching approach based on his observation of child language learning. And F. Gwyn, he said that actually language learning depends on action or activity. And he proposed the method. So several linguists, they propose different methods in language teaching and learning pedagogy. In such a, Gwen established a school to teach foreign language according to his method, and it was quite popular for a time. So in the first lesson of the foreign language teaching was like that. So what they, they initiated that the oral proficiency should be there. Okay, in a full sentence, we see, I walk towards the door, I walked. I draw near to the door. I draw near. That means this is the full sentence. So an immigrant, Akjun Bangladeshi, Jekuna Bangladesh, take a one no dish jabe. I walk towards the door. A full sentence bol bolvena. Talk on Abe Gwyn, Abu Marcel, Abu Marcel Tarabology. A poor sentence baller dorkar nai. I walk towards the door. It a baller dorkar nai. Ballen shudu ki I walk. Abar ki I draw near to the door. It a baller dorkar nai. Ballen je I draw near. I draw nearer to the door. I draw nearer. So this is the oral proficiency, and this is the written proficiency. Previously in GTM, they applied that yes, that English language learning should be appropriate and they use full sentence. And in case of oral proficiency, 
full sentence is not necessary. So they have applied a new technique or method or a process that is the shorter form. And that form is very much helpful in case of oral communications. And going to emphasize the uh, uh, language and gesture and action to convey the meaning of utterance. And Gohin Jeter Posta Kurachino, Sheta Porobutite Sheta Nam Dalaloholo, total physical response. Jetamla Porobutite equals the Yavashigbo, Sheta. Okay. So, so in such a scenario, so if I study, if I go back, then Miss English language learning situation because the title of our course is Approaches and Methods in English Language Teaching. But our context was that English language teaching or learning was not like that. That was a different scenario. What is the different scenario? That means Latin language was used as the language of Roman civilization. Why? Roman civilization was the mighty civilization. They have their economy, they have their military power, and they have their cultural power. They have the great writers and philosophers in their civilization. And for this region, in 12, 13, 14, 15, and even 16th century, Latin language dominated all over the world. And over the discovery of the waterways, many country, that means Dutch, UK, Italy, they spared the other parts of this world. And they thought the necessity, that means, they thought the necessity, that means apart from the Latin, we have to know other languages. And they proposed a different method. They proposed a different approach to learn modern languages. What is the different method? They propose that is, we should study child language. We should study uh, uh, contextual approach. We should study the situation of language learning and understanding of, the, of, of all this situation, we have seen that uh, uh, there are some reformation came in the English language teaching and learning. And this reformation was recommended by Marcel, Pender, Gent, and Gwyn. They proposed different alternative methods of English language learning and teaching. And in this regard, they wanted to initiate. And we have another linguist, other linguist, Henry Sweet in England, Wilhelm Victor in Germany, and Paul Pessy in France. They offered much credible and acceptable language teaching process and speaking oral communication. So in such a way, English language teaching started in the first half of 19th century. And with the initiative of these persons, actually uh, they, uh, they initiated an organization. And what is the organization? The International Phonetic Association was founded in 1886. And the International Phonetic Alphabet was designed to have accurate pronunciation. Onish Doshuke Shesha Diki, Amadet Oral Proficiency Dorkar Holong. Among oral proficiency mustard hote hole amader ki korte hobe exactly we have to pronounce the uh, word or sentence of the target language je 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 desher bhasha amra shikchi she desher bhasha ta thik shebhabe uchcharon korte hobe thik shebhabe uchcharon korte na parle amra shunteo parbo na bujhteo parbo na ejonno ekta organization protishta korlo kader dara ei je henry sweet wilhelm victor and paul pesi they established the international phonetic alphabet and the international phonetic association their initiation was that that means the pronunciation should be right the pronounce if the pronunciation becomes right then we can easily communicate with the language and the international phonetic uh, association they initiated some some goals the study of spoken language phonetic training in order to establish good pronunciation habit the use of observation text dialogue into uh, introduction conversational phrase and idioms so, Onish Doshoke Shuru Purjunto, E Jagagulu, Bahasha Shikar Kate Chiloina, Akon Shikana Jukta Holoki, Agishu Onish Doshoke Shuru Purjunto Silo, Grammar and Translation, Grammar Portobe and Translation Portobe, Akon Kijukta Holo, the pronunciation, Jukta Holo, Tarpore Jukta Holo, which is dialogue, Tarpore Jukta Holo, conversation, Tarpore Jukta Holo, idioms and phrase. And uh, so, grammar will be there, but apart from this, dialogue conversation idioms phrase pronunciation all became the parts of english language teaching and uh, learning scenario so in such a way they established another method 
in Gwyn had been one of the first 19th century reformer who attempted a method and that is called uh, another way, another learner, El Solveyor, who was intensive oral interaction in the target language. So El Suveyor, uh, he prescribed that yes, in case of increasing oral communication, we have to do one thing. What is the one thing? That means we have to use the intensive use of oral communication. Our oral communication is proficient. What is the key to it? El Salviar, Uni Bolenge, Amade extensively a oral communication put to Hobe. Among Shita Kiva Shamba, Shita Shamba Puche, dialogue in Madame, conversation in Madame, pronunciation practice in Madame, spoken English in Madame, everything in Madame. Among she, J. Prostapta, Shita Porovoti, she at a notun nam in the Shita Namoloki, direct method, direct method or natural method. So after GTM, we have got another approach as approach or method in English language teaching that is called direct method. In the direct method, we see that the learner has to use the frequent communication in the target language. If they communicate or interact frequently in the target language, then oral proficiency of the learner will be increased and the learner will learn many things of their target languages. Okay. So uh, thank you very much. And if you have question now, we will have those question and you can make those question right now. Okay. And... Uh, sir, I want to ask one question. What is method and approach? Okay, method and approach. Uh, uh, what is the difference between yeah. us? Okay, this. method approach is the theory of language learning. Approach is the theory of language learning, and method okay. is the way. In order to apply the theory, we have to follow a process that is method. Jamon, Amra Bolam, Jehoche, Manusher Bhasha Shekha, Judice Bole, Je. Go to go close to door. It amra mukhe na bolle. Amra ek jon shikhati ke bollam. Jehoche go close to door. She shikhati kisu na bolle she door jar kase hete gela. Okay. Ekhane ki ekhane ek guin bolte sen. Je jodi shikhati ta hete jai. Mane mukhe na bolle jodi she physical action er madhya me she kasta kore. Ta hole a go to Close to door, a English teacher should be able to learn. English teacher should be able to learn. English teacher physical action be able to learn. English teacher should 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 be able to learn. English our method holo, she theory ke apply korar podho thi. Okay. okay, thank you. Uh, but approach and method se rupore, amader ne uh, pori class se aro uh, kotha hobe, alochana hobe. Shekhane aro details amra alochana korbo. Okay, any questions? Okay, what you will do now? 